Hi everybody, Andrew here again from Growing Chefs. Welcome to our next video installment looking at our food system. In this video, we're gonna take a closer look at how our food system, from the way we produce foods, the way it travels around the world, all the way to how we choose foods, impact the environment and our natural world. Our food system contributes to more than 26% of our global greenhouse gas emissions and is one of the major contributors to how we use our land and the way that we pollute the land. And the choices that we make as individuals can really have a difference on how our food system impacts the world around us in both a positive and negative way. So at the end of the day, food is an integral part of how we are going to combat climate change as a species. And the first step in it is to learn a lot more about it. So here we go. So this time, as we start to look at our food system, we're actually going to start at the end. We're going to start with food waste and disposal because this is a huge part of how our food system impacts the environment. Here in Canada, we end up throwing out or wasting over 40% of the food that is produced. And when food ends up in the landfill, it creates a lot of methane, which contributes to our greenhouse gas emissions. So the more food that ends up in the landfill and is wasted, the more environmental impact it has. Some things that contribute to how much food ends up in the landfill are, we are blessed in Canada at having a lot of choice when it comes to food. We are able to walk into a grocery store or a supermarket and think about what we want to eat in a given day. And then generally, whatever we want is there for us to choose as long as we can pay for it. But having that much option, which is really fantastic and great to have if you like lots of different kinds of food like I do, ends up with us wasting a lot of that food because not all of those options are purchased every time. And when food reaches an expiry date or when it starts to go bad, it just ends up in the garbage. Some things that we could do to help are to create ways where food could be repurposed to get it to the places in our community where there are people struggling to have enough food. We can also choose our foods more carefully to make sure that we don't end up throwing as much food out. A lot of that happens at the consumption level of our food system, where we're all sitting down to eat. Here, in the consumption portion of our food system, our homes contribute to 30% of the food waste that happens in the food system. This is strictly from us throwing out leftovers and buying foods that we never quite get to prepare because they go bad a little too quickly. Also, when you go out to a restaurant or get takeout, Restaurants contribute to about 25% of the food waste that happens in our food system. Some things that we can do to help this are buying less and making sure that we're not over-purchasing because our eyes can sometimes be bigger than our stomachs. Sometimes we purchase more food than we need because there's a sale if you buy more, which is not necessarily the best thing to do when thinking about reducing food waste. And most importantly, learning to cook can really help you reduce the amount of food that ends up in the garbage when you learn how to repurpose scraps and leftovers into other delicious meals. Things you can do when choosing a restaurant to go to are trying to choose restaurants that don't rely on a lot of packaging and paper products. This can especially be important when choosing a place to get takeout. Can you find a restaurant that will use reusable containers? Or, in a worst case scenario, using containers that are recyclable are made from recycled products. Continuing to move backwards through our food system, we get to distribution and retail, where we go to buy the majority of our foods. This portion of the food system accounts for approximately 12% of the overall food loss that happens in our food system. This amount of food loss can come through food reaching its expiry date, people not wanting to buy produce and fresh foods that come with marks or flaws on them where they don't look perfect, and can result from goods being damaged in the way that they're received by the companies. And if you've ever seen big giant skids and piles of food in a grocery store, you can envision how little bits of it can get damaged in that process. As well, most retailers, especially in Canada, don't have a formal strategy for figuring out how to get food that is nearing or just past its expiry date, or is maybe just a little past its prime and isn't good to sell at its full price to places in the community where it's needed. As well, it takes a lot of fossil fuels to run all of those refrigerators and freezers that you see in those stores that help keep food fresh. 
Some things that we can do is, again, looking at buying a little bit less and making sure that we're not purchasing more than we need, but also helping to support organizations in our communities that redistribute food from places that sell food to places where they need it the most. Here in London, where Growing Chefs Ontario is situated, we have a fantastic local food bank. We also have a local food coalition whose main job it is is to get food from places where there is extra to places in the community where there are people that need it. No matter where you're watching this video from, there will be local organizations in your community that help with efforts such as these. So take some time and look them up and figure out how we can support them as a group. As another fun project, try Googling gleaning and see what you find out. Again, moving backwards through the food system, we get to transformation, where food is processed and packaged and turned from one thing to another. We actually don't know how much food is wasted at this point in the food system because we don't have a system that tracks it in Canada. And a lot of this has resulted from the fact that we don't have a lot of ways to be able to process and package food in Canada like we used to which can result in shipping food out of our country just to be packaged and processed before it's shipped back to us again. This can result in some unnecessary traveling, which of course burns fossil fuels through the traveling itself and having to make sure that our planes and boats and trucks are refrigerated to help keep food fresh. Of course, we lose food in that transportation process as it goes bad. But as well, our transformation systems, like our factories that will turn produce into jams and preserves, can only really do one thing at a time. And if they end up getting a co poor quality product, or if production has to shut down for any reason, it can result in a lot of food waste. And again, a lot of those factories and production facilities will use fossil fuels to operate as well. Some of the things that we can do to help reduce food waste and the environmental impact in this portion of the food system is to try and choose more whole foods that we cook ourselves at home. This will help to reduce the packaging and the processing in the system. And where you can't do that, we can also look for foods that aren't overly packaged or have a lot of unnecessary packaging. Moving backwards, once again, we get to the transportation portion of our food system. Our food moves around the world so much that it's very hard to actually figure out how much of our food is wasted as it travels. Because again, so much of our food travels such a long distance. Of course, it takes fossil fuels to run all of those planes and boats and trucks once again and the refrigerators to help keep food fresh as long as possible. But food waste also comes from spillage, damage and mishandling. Sometimes at different parts will have rodents and rats and mice that can get into it and lose food that way. And at, at any point in time, if we can't control the temperature that that food has when as it's traveling, we can lose food there as well. There's a lot that can go wrong when our food is traveling from one side of the world to the other. Some things that we can do to help is looking to buy more local foods when and where we can get them and afford them. Buying foods locally not only helps to reduce the amount of time that our foods are traveling and uses less fossil fuels, but it also helps to support businesses and people in our communities that rely on those businesses being successful for their livelihoods. And one of the most fun ways that you can meet some of the people that produce, that make, and transform our foods. And last, we arrive back at the start of our food system at production, where our food comes from. And the reason that I wanted to end this journey here is this portion of our food system has the biggest environmental footprint in our entire journey. To start off, as we mentioned before, our production system accounts for over 25% of our global greenhouse gas emissions. But possibly more importantly, 50% of the land that is not covered in ice or deserts is dedicated to agriculture. That means our forests, our grasslands, our fresh waterways, and our cities and communities together make up the other 50%. And the 50% that is dedicated to agriculture is growing every year, which means we're cutting down forests and taking up natural habitats for animals to expand our agriculture land. And in, not in every way is this necessary, but is often a reaction to feeding the types of foods that we want to eat. So as we can make more informed decisions with the food that we choose, we can help to minimize the use of land that has to be dedicated to agriculture. 
But this is complicated and requires all of us taking the time to learn about how our food is produced and all of the things that go into food production. Some other things to consider, 70% of our global fresh water withdrawals are used for agriculture. 78% of the pollution that happens to our oceans and our fresh waterways comes from food production and agriculture. 94% of animal biomass, that means poop, comes from live livestock used in agriculture. Of the 28,000 species evaluated to be threatened with extinction, agriculture and aquaculture is listed as a threat for 24,000 of them. So as you can see, food lies at the heart of trying to tackle climate change, reducing water stress, pollution, and restoring lands back to forests or grasslands and protecting the world's wildlife. So to end things on a positive note, we want to talk about some things that you all can do as individuals to help reduce the impact that our food system has on the environment. First and foremost, you can try and reduce your food waste in your classrooms, in your homes, and in the places where we go and choose to eat. Canada is committed to reduce food waste by one half by 2030 as a part of the United Nations 2030 Agenda of Sustainable Development. We can also try and reduce the packaging in all of the foods that we choose to buy. We can research and support companies who are trying to minimize packaging or using sustainable or environmentally friendly packaging. We can also write to companies who are over packaging their foods and tell them that it is important to you to make a change in this area. We can buy more local foods wherever you can, whenever you can, with whatever you can afford. Again, it reduces the amount of time that food has to travel, which helps to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, and it helps support local people in your communities who rely on the food system for their livelihoods. But most importantly, we can learn about the food system and make informed choices. Last but not least, we can even write our local, provincial, and federal politicians and tell them that a sustainable food system is important to you, that you want to make sure that your kids and grandchildren continue to have a food system that gives them lots of choice and option, but can also continue to provide enough food for all the people in the world, wherever they are, in a way that isn't harmful to the planet. It's important for our future and one of the most important things that we can do as individuals. Finally, I want to end with a little quote from Maya Angelou. Do the best you can until you know better. Then, when you know better, do better. I hope you had fun learning about food systems with us today, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the lesson. Thank you so much for tuning in, and we'll see you soon.